this is Sean Bigger. Shout out to my brother, Mikey T, the movie star. You can find me at The Bigger Picture, spelled B-I-G-G-A. Please like, subscribe, all the things that these guys tell you. It would really greatly be appreciated, and you would definitely enjoy it. And also, Mikey T, the movie star, those that haven't subscribed and like, like. First of all, I would like to introduce and say it is a pleasure to have the former co-host, I repeat, the former co-host of my expert opinion, a very controversial individual, but an individual that stands by his words, an individual that I would like to say stands on business, Harlem's own Sean Bigger. What's going on, Mikey T? How you doing? This is a God afternoon. Well, Sean Bigo, let's start this interview off by first acknowledging the moves that you're making and congratulating you on your very fast success. So let me just say that off top. I know for a fact that there's not many people you'd sit down and do this with. I haven't sat down and did this with anyone, Mike, until you're the first. Yeah, man. And I, I want to just start off by saying, man, Sean Bigger. You're not on everyone's platform. You're selective. So I want to let you know that my audience appreciates you for linking up with me. Definitely, Mike and T. I appreciate you too. You've been hitting me on the Instagram. We've been chatting back and forth and I appreciate you too. I was watching you um, when you first started this out. So to me, like you're one of the founder forefathers for this whole movement. So I appreciate you too, Mike. Really, that's dope, man. You know, and I want to start off by getting a general uh, idea of where you're from, you know, where you were born and raised and what area you represent. I'm from Harlem, New York, 139th Street, Lenox Avenue, the dark side, you know, same block as Big L, Herb McGruff, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That area that you're from, you know, some would say it's legendary. Some would say that area is the birthplace of hip hop. You know, some may argue that that's arguable. Tell me about the influence that your block had on you. Oh boy, <laughs> it was a tough block. You know, um, I went to private school. You know, um, and um, growing up up the block from me, the danger zone. They was um. They was all they was already like um a united forefront and um it was just a big park on my block, a legendary big park. If you watch above the rim, that's the park that Tupac was playing basketball in. That's my block. And um those guys was exactly what it was. It was the danger zone. And um so growing up, me being a private school kid coming from a certain different background, it was like, um, it was an experience, let's just say that. It was a, a very learning experience for me. Can you tell me why people say it's a legendary block? Um, it would be a legendary block for one because of the crew that came out that block. So when I was young growing up, you don't understand, you know, what your block is, but the NFL crew, shout out to the NFL crew, um, Big L and like I said, Herb McGruff and many others, that um, crew was arguably the strongest block in Harlem besides maybe 141st Street, Lenox Avenue, 142nd Street, Lenox Avenue. But they was that was the strongest. There was no crew messing with NFL crew. They was a strong united front of brothers, and they pretty much held it down. And then of course Big L, you know, come out of that block. If you um think of the wire, you know, it was sort of like that. They for many years that crew, you know, ran that block. Could you tell me what the NFL crew stood for? Um, I, I don't want to uh, use that word, so let's just say Negroes for life. <laughs> Could you also tell me how you met Big L and how far back with Big L did you go? To the child, I can't even have my 
earliest memory. He's a little older than me, but from um, a little kid, I knew, you know, same block, you know. So I used to see him from my earliest memory. And my earliest memory, he was always fresh. He was always, um, and he was wearing night gear sneakers and, you know, all of that stuff before, you know, I even knew what any of that stuff meant. So my earliest memories of coming outside, going to catch the bus to go to my private school, and I used to see Al. So we're going back to about six, seven years old. Did you watch Big L come up battling rappers? You know, I wanted to ask, was Big L a battle rapper or would you say he was more focused on music? His career started out battle rapping, yes. He definitely, his um, his rise to fame, yeah, he had did, he was battle rapping, you know. And um, it was all throughout Harlem, you know, his success that he was having. Did you ever witness him battling anybody? Um, no, not personally. Me and him used to uh, share bars back and forth with each other, but um, you know, no. Um, besides that, no. You know, you know. I looked up to Big Al. You know, he. Um, so we used to, you know, when we see each other, he would test my skills. You know, what I'm saying like, because I was rapping pretty much all my life too. So, you know, he knew that was a passion of mine. So when he would see me, he would test my skills. You know, we would, you know, trade bars amongst each other. Battle rapping was different at that time. It wasn't the disrespect that grew to what you know now. Um, it was all about a skill level back then to see how well your skill was. It wasn't so much about, you know, the disrespect that was not a part of it. Uh, did you know Mason Cameron as well? Were they around Big L at that point? Yes. Yes. Um, Cameron is from 140th Street. Um, me and Cameron is connected in um, more than one way. His uncle was married to my cousin, you know, um, for many years. They have many kids together. And then also Cameron's grandmother lived in my father building on the east side of Harlem, you know, even though me and Cam never built a relationship because Harlem was like a different place. Like, you know, um, we could see each other and know each other every day, but if we didn't have direct link with each other, we wouldn't speak to each other. But, you know, it's not that you don't know who that person is. So it's like, it was like a relationship like that. You know, um, but yes, Cam is from 140th Street. That's just one block over, you know, one block is like, you know, not a couple steps away. So um, Mace is from a little bit further down on 132nd Street, but he also was a part of the NFL crew. So he mainly used to hang out on 139th Street. And so he was, you know, more on 139th Street than he was his own block. So yeah, um, same thing with Mace too in the game, go back and forth, you know, sharing bars, but never really had a personal relationship. You know, we had even had the same barber, you know what I'm saying? But um, back then again, Harlem was the type of place if you wasn't, you know, directly, you know, Link and I was never like um, a person that uh try to you know you know tag on to people. I was always was a little bit prideful and um had my own thing going on, you know, doing my own thing. So it was different like that. But yes, uh, I know I know those guys. What did you think about Mace getting picked up by Bad Boy fresh out of Harlem? Mm -hmm. I remember when it first happened, you know, um, I was proud of him, you know, I was, um, I remember um, he was supposed to be going to Florida, you know, to get up with Jermaine Dupree, and um, rumor had it that somehow he missed getting up with Jermaine Dupree, and that somehow he ran into Puff, and that um, that was all she wrote when he ran into Puff, Puff picked him up. And um, from what I from what I remember and record, he immediately his life immediately changed. He 
Puff moved him out to Long Island until, you know, to, to his house in Long Island and um, gave him one of his bins. You remember Puff had that line, I got a bin that I ain't even drove yet. Well, Mace was driving that bin. So, you know, I was happy for, him. you know, it. Um, besides Big L being success, successful before them, it really showed that it was a possibility, you know, it was a, it, it was a possibility that, you know, what we saw on TV that we could be a part of. So for me, I, I was, you know, even though, like I said, I didn't, I did not converse too much with those guys. I was very proud of them. And I had, a, um, I had on my block, I used to run um, like a closing stand on my block, you know? So the day that Mace came to Harlem with the bins and he put, or the NFL guys inside the bins and driving around Harvard and driving them around Harvard. I watched it. I was right there on my block across the street running my closing stand. And um, I was proud of him, you know, I, I, I was proud of him. What did you think about Mace ultimately leaving the rap industry, you know, departing from Bad Boy to go and start a church in Atlanta? Um... I thought that was um actually I thought that was commendable at, at the time that he did it. Um even though people didn't understand Harlem was a dangerous place, you know what I'm saying? It was a very dangerous place and it was a lot of controversy at that time going on in Harlem. And let's just say this. It was the type of place and things that's going on and experiences that you might run into that, you know, sometimes the devil have a way to chase you to God. We leave that at that.